Police say they have a predator behind bars tonight, accusing him of sexually assaulting a five-year-old girl while babysitting, and police fear she is not his only victim. Hurricane Harvey intensifying, bearing down on the U.S. and putting millions of people in danger as the fierce storm prepares for landfall. And fists flying downtown Detroit as the Tigers and Yankees clear the benches. What the clubhouse is saying about the big day at Comerica. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. We're glad you're with us at 11. We begin tonight with a disturbing story that could end up impacting families from all across Metro Detroit. Tonight, a former daycare worker and babysitter in jail accused of sexually assaulting a child he was caring for. He worked at several daycare centers across town, which means he had access to a lot of children. Let's bring in Jermont Terry following the story for us tonight with what we've learned on the latest on this case. Jermont. Devin, the images and videos detectives say they found on this man's computer shook the most experienced officer to the core. And tonight, this accused child predator is accused of using his job to prey on his victims. Parents at the Rainbow Child Care Center in Sterling Heights, the Luray Daycare at Oakland University, and two locations in Troy, North Hills Child Care and Girioko Monastery Academy, are asked to talk to their children the good touch, bad touch talk. Especially if they came across this guy, Michael Pankey. He was uh, like an assistant caregiver, I guess that would be the title at some of these daycares he was at. One of them, he was a student teacher. On paper, Pankey's resume looks impressive. He holds a degree in early childhood development. It easily helped land him daycare jobs. And just over a year, Pankey bounced around to many locations. From October 2015 until December of 2016, he worked at four different daycares. And in December 2016 is right when his resume turned into a rap sheet. A five-year-old Panky was babysitting came forward saying he touched her and by May Detroit police arrested him for criminal sexual assault and now police fear more victims. He didn't have a prior criminal history. He, he was never been arrested for any of these charges before. Um, this is all new and so that's why I'm concerned if we have more victims out there and they may not have told anybody, may not have told a parent or the, the teacher at the daycare. Police filed child porn images and videos after searching Panky's house off Sorrento and Curtis in Detroit. Turns out that um, he was producing some of the child pornography. Investigators cannot rule out if he produced the child porn while at the daycares. I can't say for sure it is possible that that may have happened. Now, we do know that the various daycares are working with authorities on this investigation. They have notified the parents of the possibility of what could have taken place at their facilities. Now, we should also point out, as of now, no one has come forward with any prior complaints about Panky. Tonight, he sits in federal custody, accused of having those child porn images all over his computer. A trial is waiting in that case. For now, reporting live tonight, I'm Jermont Terry, Local 4. Okay, Jermont, some breaking news just into the local four newsroom from Warren, where police are investigating the death of an eight month old boy. The child was found inside Warren Manor Apartments on DeQuinder. That's north of Eight Mile. The boy's death is being called suspicious. Hurricane Harvey, less than 24 hours away from making landfall and putting millions of people in danger. Now, people on the Texas Gulf Coast continue to prepare tonight for as many as three feet of rain along with the high powered winds we associate with hurricanes. Ben Bailey tracking what has happened since we were talking about this at six. Ben. Yeah, guys, uh, the 11 o'clock advisory is in right now. This is a category one storm. It is still inspected to intensify to a major category three. In fact, by this time tomorrow night, this is going to be dangerously close to the shore somewhere near Corpus Christi. But really, the story begins just there and could not end until Thursday of next week. This storm is expected to just linger and possibly reemerge into the Gulf and intensify. And then it's the rain that's the story. In fact, you talk about those possibilities of upwards of three feet. Notice that those highest bullseyes are not even on the coast. Those are inland, possibly as far north as Houston and maybe even north of the city. So we're looking at a major, in fact, the Hurricane Center is calling it devastating rainfall totals. Temperatures back home tomorrow, very crisp. We'll start out low 50s, but a lot of us in the 40s tonight. So we'll run that down in your four zone forecast coming up, guys. Wait a minute, here we go. Oh, here we go at home. Robot and Capera get into it. A melee in Motown. Tiger slugger Miguel Cabrera starts a fight that clears the benches at Comerica Park. 
And tonight, Tigers fans wondering uh, when and for how long Cabrera will likely be suspended. Yeah, that's a big question. Bernie's here with a reaction from the clubhouse, too. I think he'll be suspended for a while, and I think it'll happen soon. Pretty clear the video there, but you saw probably saw more pugilistic action this afternoon at Comerica than you'll see Saturday night with Mayweather and McGregor. However, today's events at Comerica will probably mean Miguel Cabrera gone for a while. We've got highlights. This was your main event. Tiger Six, Cabrera and catcher Austin Romine were talking. And push, punches, Cabrera did throw the first punch. The bench is empty. There was lots of action everywhere. Now, this came after Michael Fulmer hit Gary Sanchez in the fifth. The Yankees retaliated by throwing behind Cabrera just before this broke out, and that's what got him upset. Fulmer said the Yankees were, were within their baseball rights. I don't blame him for, uh, for taking retaliation there. I really don't. Uh, but after Miggy, it should have been done. And I think that's the biggest thing with me. Um, you know, obviously some of the, the, the brawls, it's, you know, the guys are yelling at me, uh, saying I started this and this and that, but I'm, I'm just telling them, like, uh, you know, that's not me. All right, that's Michael Fulmer. Eight ejections, four beanball incidents. The Tigers did win the game. We'll have much more coming up in sports. Yep. Right, what a mess. Yeah. yeah. All right, All right, Bernie. A Commerce Township woman hears a car splash into Union Lake and jumps into action to help. She ended up pulling a man out of his sinking car. Mara McDonald in Commerce tonight. Uh, Mara, she actually had to vault over a fence to help save this guy. Let me set this up for you. The guy who ends up in the water is near Wise and Union Lake Road. He jumps the curb over the fence, over the seawall, and ends up in the water. Now, the woman who rescues him lives this way across the lake. She sees it, starts sprinting over to help, calling 911. Oh, my God. Trying to go over there. Oh, oh. Nicole doesn't remember much of what she said to 911. She just knew she had to act. Somebody might be dying. I gotta go. She told 911 where to go and hung yeah, up. So I was just out, you know, finishing the night and about ready to put out the fire. And when I heard the screeching of the tires and the water splash, she started sprinting up the side of her house around a restaurant on Union Lake and Wise Roads. I couldn't find a way in, so I had to hop the fence. Um, and that's when I kind of dropped my phone and hopped the fence and ran over to the car. The car was upside down, sinking into the water and the muck. I was up into my waist. Um, trying to get the car door open and so I finally pulled it open. It took me a couple minutes against all of that and he was hanging upside down and so I unbuckled him and pulled him out of the car and pulled him up the hill onto shore. By the time this travel agent by day and stepmom to three accomplished all this, police and EMS arrived, but they were down so low she was afraid they'd miss them. So she started running up the hill. Please note the attractive orthopedic boot, yeah. which is now on her foot. Yeah, I sprained my ankle pretty good, so, but at least it was after I got him out of the car and made sure he was okay and that nobody was drowning. Nicole just got off her crutches today, so that's a plus, but she's going to have that ugly boot for a while, and she's got some physical therapy coming up. As far as the guy who was in the car, uh, the sheriffs tell us that alcohol was most definitely a factor in his crash, but that he's okay. We're in Commerce Township. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. All right, Mara. A Local 4 viewer says her East Detroit neighborhood has seen better days, but there was a moment today that brought a smile to her face. Yeah, check this out. Two Detroit police officers stopped to play basketball with a group of kids. They played for about 20 minutes and then spent time chatting and taking <laughs> group photos. That's fantastic. Got to be better than the usual day Absolutely. for everybody. Well, Amazon is about to make a lot of customers happy how the company is planning to save you money at Whole Foods. And burglars burst into a business for a massive smash and grab, and there were enough of them to field a football team where they stole more than $100,000 worth of goods. The first trouble at a popular Detroit night spot, are they being targeted? But for whatever reason, we seem to be the only ones being harassed by police. The reason they say they keep getting citations from the police department, the local four defenders investigate. Controversy brewing at a downtown Detroit bar. They're doing everything they can to run us out. The city says it's responding to noise complaints, but the owners say there's more to the story. Owners of Center Park Bar say the city is targeting them because its clientele is predominantly African American, and that's not all. They also claim a well-connected businessman wants to take over the bar's prime location. Defender Kevin Dietz talks to both sides in a very heated property war. 
It's reached a boiling point over this precious piece of property at the corner of Randolph and Gratiot. Right. Yep. Center Park Bar is a party hotspot in booming downtown Detroit that has well-known figures fiercely fighting. Dennis Archer Jr., the son of Detroit's former mayor, wants to take it over. Christopher Williams wants to keep it. Current Mayor Mike Duggan has been sued. So has police chief James Craig. There are pending cases in both federal and county courts. In filed documents, Williams says the city is targeting Center Park Bar because their clientele is mostly African American. We've had several noise tickets. Uh, they came in and tried to close us up several occasions. The owner says they opened up four years ago before Detroit's nightlife picked up. Now that it's a desirable property, the city and police are hitting them hard with noise violations while letting multiple other outdoor venues party in peace. It's one of the few thriving black owned businesses downtown and, and why would you pick on them to drive them out? Activist Robert Davis has joined in the fight. He says the other reason the city is trying to take over the bar, Dennis Archer Jr. wants it and he is a major fundraiser for Detroit politicians. You have this mayor trying to pull this political witch hunt because they're here and are not willing to budge to allow Dennis Archer Jr. to have this facility. The city says that is ridiculous. The bar is not being targeted. It's breaking the law and its lease. The ticket or the ordinance for the loud noise and music is $500. Um, on a good night, they make about five or six grand. So uh, the business owner has made a business decision just to pay the um, ticket and continue with the party. The police say they are simply responding to 911 calls from guests staying right next door at the Hilton Garden Inn Hotel. Can't take it, it's too loud. It's after midnight. Okay, sorry. You got people sorry. screaming, swearing. They plan on this noise next door at the club. The hotel manager says the bar's noise is hurting business. We've had guests leave in the middle of the night um, because there was just no, the nightclub would not turn down the music. The city has filed a nuisance suit against the bar but not even 100 yards away is another outdoor party scene. The old shillelagh has regular parties every bit as big and loud as Center Park bars. Old shillelagh's clientele is mostly white. Police in the city have no problems with these outside parties. They have the license and the permits to have the uh, establishment uh, in, in manner which they have it. Secondly, uh, when we speak with them and ask them to turn the music down, they comply. The city says that Center Park Bar has only a cafe permit, allowing tables for food and drinks, not a nightclub atmosphere. The city has never got involved in a noisy neighbor dispute between downtown businesses, according to the city attorney. He says this is the very first one, but it has nothing to do with Dennis Archer Jr. wanting the property or Center Park Bar's current mostly black clientele. The city says it's about protecting the hotel, which is following the rules against the Center Park Bar, which is not. We have a 15 year lease. They're trying to do everything they can to truncate that, kick us out and make moves for other businesses. It seems there's no room for compromise between the two sides, so a judge will decide if this bar owner can stay or if there'll be new operators coming in with a new clientele. Kevin Dietz, Defenders. Interesting, all right, Kevin. Kind of growing pains. You expect more of these kinds of Absolutely. disputes to come, right? Yep, yep, indeed. Here's a look at what Karen Drew is working on for tomorrow night. He's a Red Wing known for his coldness and toughness on the ice, but what he's doing on this softball field will really warm your heart. And we see the smiles, we see the laughter, we see the tears, and it, uh, it means so much. To oh, and Poster with a left really caught Miller. He He's one of the most penalized players in NHL history. But what Joe Koser is doing now is bringing tears of joy. He's tough as nails, but he's got a heart of gold. Making his mark off the ice and changing lives. My one on one with Joe Koser tomorrow at 11. He'll tell you darn right one of the most penalized players. <laughs> <laughs> Proud of it. All right, let's bring in Ben Boy. Fascinating what we're watching happen with this hurricane. Oh, isn't it? my goodness. Yeah, it's scary to think. Yeah. We'll keep an eye on that for sure, though. It is, yeah. It's hard to deal with a Category 3 hurricane yeah. to begin with, but that's just the beginning of the story. Yeah, right. It is going to be something to watch for a week uh, down there. But tonight, uh, just think of it as a rehearsal for fall. 
test out the <laughs> comforter on your bed. Make sure those extra blankets are uh, where they need to be. Uh, but we will be seeing some warmer temperatures as we get towards the end of the week. It is already 46 out in Ann Arbor. Most of us are in the 50s. Of course, every time we see clear skies, uh, we usually see Ann Arbor crater there at the airport. Uh, but we will be seeing a lot of 40s by the time we start out tomorrow morning. Temperature change compared to this time yesterday. Yes, it is colder. It is noticeably colder for most of us about five to seven degrees colder. Uh, obviously a little bit chillier out there towards Ann Arbor. Otherwise, the clouds have exited. Uh, you see that on the satellite image. So with clear skies outside, some relatively dry air, we will see those numbers fall to the 40s tonight, but this will be the coldest that we'll have to contend with uh, for the upcoming forecast. Not a lot to look at here on the forecast map until we get into tomorrow. We're keeping our skies mostly sunny here across southeast Michigan, but interesting to note, uh, you can see these uh, raindrops that are coming in off of Lake Huron. That is lake effect rain. You got that cold air coming over the warm lake waters, and that is causing a couple lake effect showers tomorrow. At least it's not snow. We can look forward to that. Uh, that should stay over the border, so we shouldn't have to contend with it over here. But as we get into Saturday, still a lot of sunshine around and temperatures start creeping back up as at least approaching half which can't quite get there. It looks like in the forecast uh, for the next seven days. Lows tonight 53 in the city. We'll call it 52 officially at Metro, and that's going to be just about it for the 50s. Everybody else looking at the 40s as chilly as 46 down in Blissfield. Adrian, you're going to be at 47 to come see waking up at 48 degrees. Some of the coldest readings maybe out here in the western edges of uh, Lenaway and Washington, or I should say Washington and Livingston counties, 45 in Howell, 46 in Chelsea, and those numbers just slightly milder uh, as you work your way inland. But North Zone still chilly chilly tomorrow. Uh, the only places that may see some milder numbers are out towards Lake Huron and possibly down towards in 59 where we'll be in the low 50s. But again, this is as chilly as we'll have to deal with and we'll see those numbers come up in the next seven days. 73 tomorrow, respectable finish considering how chilly we're going to be in the morning and we will see a decent amount of sunshine. Same goes for Saturday at 76 in the afternoon, but 80 is just a little too much to ask for here in the next seven. <laughs> we'll, we'll get close <laughs> yeah, there on Monday. Not, not, well, that's right. Really close. But yeah, average is at 81, so yeah. very much close, but uh, it's going to be below for seven. Yeah. A big change to a popular kids' birthday party destination, the staple at Chuck E. Cheese's that's about to disappear. Also, one burglar wasn't enough, so they brought 12. <laughs> what this football team of thieves was after. Man being taken into custody in this video has filed a federal lawsuit against the DPD over this rough arrest. Happened at a gas station on Detroit's west side. The chief is defending his officers, saying the store's surveillance shows much more than what you'll see on this cell phone video. A Roseville family is pleading for the return of their one-month-old puppy named Thor. Surveillance video captured two people in a Dodge Charger uh, picking the dog up after he got out of the yard. If you have any information, call police. The Palace of Auburn Hills officially closing, but not before Detroit native takes the stage one last time. Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band will be the final event at the arena next month. Turn the page for the last song, don't you think? <laughs> Palace is closing <laughs> after the Pistons move downtown. Well, it's not the kind of store you'd expect to be targeted by crooks, especially not this many. A dozen thieves broke into an optometry shop in Southern California to steal glasses. They smashed open display cases and grabbed frames, most of them designer sunglasses. They got away with $140,000 in merchandise. Well, some people joke that it should be called Whole Paycheck because of the prices, but starting <laughs> next week, things are going to get a bit cheaper at Whole Foods. Amazon recently bought the chain and says its goal is to make it more affordable for everyone. So it's cutting the prices of bananas, eggs, uh, salmon, ground beef. Amazon is also working on a Whole Foods rewards program that would incorporate, of course, Amazon Prime. Unbelievable. All right, Chuck E. Cheese is saying goodbye to a staple. The Pizza Time Players Club is retiring. The animatronic band what? started playing in locations back in 1977. <laughs> Say it ain't so, but the band members, uh, various Chuck E. Cheese characters haven't aged too well. The technology for the band hasn't been able to keep up with the times and many kids just aren't into them anymore. The CEO says the company needs to focus on creating the magic for new generations.
I always thought they were a little creepy. Well, a little. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, yes, just, so. uh, I was I thinking of GoFundMe uh, page, sure. maybe to Why keep not? them keep alive. Because yeah. you're going to cancel your next birthday party there if they're not playing. I know that. Don't ruin my day <laughs> like that. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, baseball or some form of it well, that was that played at America was? today. Also, a little bit of a dust up in the dugout. We'll tell you what we know about Justin Verlander and Victor Martinez getting into it. And a little bit we call bullseye. Come on back.